I hope that this lecture is going to wake up everybody out there to realize that you may not want to make ages in your body and take every step not to make them, but you're consuming them every day and you don't even know about it. Ages from exogenous sources. Now, wait a second. You mean to say that you, you make ages in your body because of all the bad habits I talked about, but you also eat it? Yes, it's found in all the foods that you are all consuming these days. 70% of our food that we consume today is processed foods and all of it contains ages. But lucky for you, only 10% of it is absorbed into your body. But we eat a lot of processed foods. So it ends up in your colon where it affects the microbiome. And we don't even know what the microbiome is going to do with the ages right now. That's under investigation right now. But I can tell you it can't be good. Because if the bacteria in your gut are eating up all those ages that you put inside through your mouth, those bacteria down there, they got better things to do. And that population of bacteria will change. So you're changing the whole ratio of the good and bad bacteria in your gut. Just like how when you eat sugar, you, you create bad bacteria in your gut. So your whole metabolism changes. This is very important. Your microbiome, we talked about that before. Very, so here you have ages. How? I grilled my beef, really blackened it, ate it, went into my intestines. Those poor bacteria, they suffered because they had to eat up some of that ages and the whole balance of your microbiome changed. Plus some of those ages, 10% got absorbed into my bloodstream. Now I have a problem. So I was trying so hard not to make ages, hmm? didn't I? I watched what I eat, I watched my sugar and everything else, but then I ate a real blackened piece of meat. And I just undid everything. I just undid it. Continuous glucose monitoring, that's for you. So how can you inhibit the formation of these glucose and protein molecules? I'm just going to go through a few of them here first. These are the synthetic ones on the right side, metformin, NSAIDs, um, and these vitamins, B vitamins, and then flavonoids. Um, and the natural ones are curcumin, alpha lipoic acid, ginkgo, celery, red pepper, parsley, mint, green tea. They'll ring a bell with you. You knew that they're good for you. Now you know why they're good for you. And what is the mechanism? Now you know what the mechanism is. This thing called naringenin. What's that found in? That's found in, 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 in citrus, for example. Hesperidin is also found in, in citrus. That doesn't mean you go out and juice. No. It just means that you eat a little bit of a lemon piece or you eat a, a, a slice or two of orange or some citrus or grapefruit or something. Don't hog on it. Just take a little bit. That's all you need. Just a little bit. So now we come to all these outside ages, the ages you're putting into you. Ages are bad. Don't make it in your body. Ages are bad because you shouldn't be consuming them, but you're consuming them and not know about it. Look, I hope that this lecture is going to wake up everybody out there to realize that you may not want to make ages in your body and take every step not to make them, but you're consuming them every day, and you don't even know about it. So let's look at those. So these are reused and reheated old foods. You take old food, you've put all the molecules together, they cooled off, now you reheated it, you're gonna, they're gonna glue together. You're gonna make ages. Sugar in the food, glucose in the food, fructose in the food, aldehydes in the food are all gonna start combining with Rancid fat, because when you reheat oil, what happens? You get peroxidation of oil, you're getting rancidity of the oil. So now when you reheat the food, you're creating the perfect setup to make rages. So I take this little thing, I put it in my, my pot again, and I reheat it. And my ages in it was, let's say, I'm just going to give you a number, it was 1,000 units of ages in it. I heat it up now, I've just bumped it up to 2,000. Do you see why I don't eat leftover foods? And why I don't reheat leftover foods? And then, packaged ready-made food. Anything that's ready-made, made in a factory, how do they make it? They heat it, right? 
they heat it, they bake it, they do something with it, creates ages. And the thing about ages is they're delicious. That's the problem with ages. That's why you're consuming ages and you don't even know about it. Watch, watch, listen, pay attention. Any food that contains high fructose corn syrup or sugar is already attaching itself to all the other molecules in it. So let's take a cookie, for example. It's going to attach itself to the protein in it. It's going to attach itself to all that fat. And which fat do they use, by the way? The bad ones, right? The puffers. So now that sugar, so that cookie is full of ages. High temperature dry cooking. Who does that? Processed food industry, right? High temperature dry cooking. How cookies made? How cakes made? How all these things, ready-made stuff made? They're all made with high temperature dry cooking. So now what's the dryness all about? I'm going to explain that to you now, okay? Exogenous ages where you forcing the glucose and the protein and the lipids to combine happens when you fry something, when you broil it, when you're blackening it, when you're charring it, when you're baking it, and all cereals. Children, what are we doing to them? So, cereals, baking, charring, blackening, broccoli, and frying, destroys the food. Do not destroy food. These are unnatural. All of these are unnatural. Our predecessors did not have all this. Our bodies were designed so many millions of years ago without all this. This is modern man creating this. And when they create this, that's no longer food. These are products. These are not foods. This is not food. This is altered by us. We blackened it, we charred it, we baked it, we cerealized it, we broiled it, we, we did frying to it. It's unnatural to fry. Just a couple of hundred years ago, it would have been so hard for them to, uh, to fry stuff. Today, we can fry things just like that. Let's dive right into the bad effects of what you're consuming. What you're consuming will cause tissue damage, so that will cause you to have diabetes, cardiomyopathy, small vessel disease, renal failure, your gut flora will change, you'll get fatty liver from consuming these products. And we know that. Processed foods cause all these diseases. We know that. In the brain, you get leptin resistance. So what? So these ages go to the brain. Leptin is a molecule, a protein, that's supposed to tell you, I'm full. I don't need to eat. I'm satiated. So you get leptin resistance. So you get hungry all the time. You consume ages. Look, think about it. Take a packet of chips. Doritos tells you, actually, you can't have more less than one. You just keep eating. You can't stop. You cannot stop. It's amazing. It's so perfect. Because your brain never gets the turn off signal. You eat, you eat these foods, you'll never be satisfied. But if I gave you half a stick of butter, I think you'll stop eating more because you'll get a signal in your brain, I'm done. But with these foods, which are not foods, these products, there's no turn off signal. Because these ages have turned off those signals. So, your bones get osteoporosis. We have an epidemic of osteoporosis, but everyone's on a high calcium diet, vitamin D supplementation, taking the sun as well, and all these things, and still getting osteoporosis. Well, what's going on? Because when you're inflamed, the body wants all that calcium, so it increases your osteoclastic activity because the body's preparing you to go to war because there's inflammation going on, inflammation. So it knows that it needs to store so you get fat. It needs to be inflamed because you're going to go to a war. So in your liver, it causes inflammation, your fatty liver. Today, what percent of the population has fatty liver? More than 50% of people have fatty liver. And yet at the turn of the century, it was less than 5%. Okay, now, what are the natural ways that I can bring my ages down? Now look at it. Vitamin E, but it should be in the form of natural foods that are rich in vitamin E. For example, all your, all your nice vegetables and the fresh nuts, not 
not roasted nuts. I'll come to that in a second. Curcumin, alpha lipoic acid, parsley, and the flavonoids that are found in all these colorful condiments that we put with our food. Nature gave us these condiments to overcome what we're going to inevitably get some ages in our food. But combine it, do the right combination, put some celery on it, put some parsley on it, cook with some curcumin in it, and you will see that there's intelligence there. Mint and chamomile, of course, fine. Artificial ways that you can do to reduce ages include acetyl salicylic acid, metformin, and then there's a couple of compounds that I've listed over here, and I'll come to those in a minute. Because I'm sure people are going to ask me, about how, what, I, I just want a pill. Well, I'll show you. You might be able to do a few things to help you, but it won't help you too much. It'll help you a little bit. So what are high in ages? The foods. All animal products are high in ages, unfortunately. Because those animals already have ages in them. Why? Because you put it in them. How? You fed them corn instead of f fresh grass. You gave your chickens corn instead of giving them worms and letting them run around and pick whatever they can pet. So what's happened is that these we eating sick animals. That's why today's meat is so high in ages. Because the meat itself is sick. You're eating a sick cow. Now, if you understood what I just said, would you want to eat a sick cow? Would you want to eat a cow with metabolic syndrome? No, because then you're going to get metabolic syndrome. But that's exactly what we do. You're eating sick chickens. And you're eating sick red meat. So they have too much omega-6 in them because they're all eating all the wrong stuff. They don't have enough omega-3. And they have a lot of ages in them, tons and tons of ages in, the, in that meat. And then what do we do with the meat? We broil it, we air fry it, we grill it, we roast it, we barbecue it, or we bake it. There you go. Now you've just increased the amount of ages. So first of all, it came loaded with ages, and now we just made it worse. The foods that are naturally low, low are high-carb foods. That means they only have carbs in them. There's nothing, they don't, that sugar doesn't have anything else to react with. But of course, I say don't eat that either, because I don't want you to get diabetes. Then your sugar will go up, and then you'll make ages in you. Do you see the dilemma we're in? So let's say you take a root. It has lots and lots of sugar in it. It'll have very little ages in it. But then you eat too much of that, your sugar will go up, and then you'll make ages in you. See? It's a problem. Foods that are naturally high in water, they're very moist foods will have very little ages in it. That's what I'm saying, eat real food. Real food in its natural state. Lots of water in it, still them. And high in phytonutrients. Phytonutrients, that means different colors of foods. Yellow, purple, red, green, vegetables. You see, let me tell you something. You can have all the proteins in the animals, but all these other vegetables that are medicinal because they have flavonoids in them. They have polyphenols in them. That's why you got to have your protein, whatever you're going to have, but you got to have your veggies with it, because that's the medicine to offset the damage from the other meat. Do you see? You need the combo. Raw, uncooked vegetables are fantastic. They have hardly any ages. So if you enjoyed this short segment, here's another clip that I think you'll really enjoy. And if you'd like to see the whole video, then click here.